arithmetic or equally spaced, geometric, their uh, distinguishing characteristic is the ratio of the terms. The ratio of the terms of a geometric sequence are constant. Meaning the ratio of terms is the same throughout, for example. 3, 6, 12, 24, 48, etc., etc., etc. I'm looking at the ratio of terms, which what do I mean by that? Divide the terms. So I take 6 divided by 3, that's 2. 12 divided by 6, that's 2. 12, 24 divided by 12, that's 2. And 48 divided by 24 is 2. <coughs> So the ratio of terms, or another way you could look at it is multiply by 2, multiply by 2. Yeah, I'm multiplying by the same thing each time to get the next term. But that translates into it being a ratio of terms. So <clears throat> obviously the uh, ratio is going to be important. In this case, R is 2. All right, so that's geometric. If it has a common ratio, it's called a geometric <clears throat> sequence and R is the common ratio. Now, what can happen, well, here's a couple of things on this one. 90, negative 30, 10, negative 10 thirds, 10 ninths. <clears throat> this too is a geometric sequence, so uh, one note here is note the alternating terms. So you can have alternating ter signs <clears throat> in a, uh, a geometric sequence. <coughs> here's what that's going to mean. A couple of things here. Now, notice here, these are also, you know, sort of decreasing. I mean, it's because of the alternating thing. But uh, <coughs> again, be aware that uh, your ratio, your R, is you take a term and divide that by the previous term. Because if you go the other way, you get something else. So take the term divided by the previous term. So it's negative. 30 divided by 90, not the other way around. You may want to go the other way around, but it's the term divided by the previous, just like we did up here. What does that give me? Well, simplify that's negative one third. 10 divided by negative 30 is also negative one third. And then even if you do these, negative 10 thirds divided by 10, which you might be thinking, well, what is that? But <clears throat> if you remember, divided by, uh, if you got fractions divided, think uh, reciprocal. So negative 10 thirds divided by 10 means negative 10 thirds divided by the reciprocal or times the reciprocal of 10, 1 tenth. So the tens do cancel so you get negative 1 third. So anyway, um, <clears throat> what's the ratio here? Negative 1 third. So keep that in mind. You divide, you take a term divided by the previous term. And so sometimes you get a negative ratio and also uh, note there, sometimes you also get a, uh, a ratio that's less than one, if you will. Okay? All right. So with that in mind, are these next few here geometric? Sequences? Number one. 500, 250, 125, 62.5, and of course if it is geometric, I would want the ratio. Is that one geometric? Okay. Yes, it is. What is R? 2? Not quite. R is 1 half, yes. Because remember, you're going 250 divided by 500. And if you do that, that gets 0.5 or uh, a half. 125 divided by 250, that also gives me 0.5. And 62.5 divided by 125 also gives me 0.5. So yeah, the ratio is 0.5 or a half. Yeah, it's really easy to say there are two, but they are halving instead of doubling, if you will. Okay. 
Uh, well, we've been trying this one uh, several times now. Let's see if it's a geometric. 1, 4 are squares. 1, 4, 9, 16, 2, 25. Four divided by one is four. Nine divided by four, well, it's 2.25. And that's enough to say, nope, it's not geometric either, okay? <laughs> Don't have a common ratio. It's not arithmetic, the squares aren't, and it's not uh, geometric either. Is this one geometric? A sub n equals 5 times 4 to the nth. Well, might be a good idea to write these out, a few anyway. What's the first term? First term would be uh, <clears throat> 5 times 4 to the first, 5 times 4 to the first, that's 20. Second term would be 5 times 4 squared. That's 5 times uh, 16, which is 80, isn't it? <clears throat> Second term would be 5 times 4 cubed, which is 5 times 64, which is 320. And fourth term would be 5 times 4 fourth, which is 1280. And I think that's sufficient enough. What do you think? Geometric? Yep, it is geometric, isn't it? It is geometric, and the uh, ratio is, what's the ratio? Four. Yeah, you divide term by previous term, you get four. Okay? All right, well, <clears throat> let me just uh, go with that for just a second. So here is what a geometric sequence looks like if you write it out sort of in an equation type setting. And do you notice what type of equation this is? Well, the n, notice where it is. The n is in the power. So if the n is in the power, that's called an exponential expression. Covered those a couple of chapters ago, but <clears throat> yeah. If you have an exponential expression, then that expression generates a geometric sequence, okay? So geometric sequences are <coughs> exponential, power contains the exponent. Uh, power of case. Variable, okay? The variable is in the power. That's what that means. You've got the variable and the power. That's an exponential, and that's geometric. Now, the other point is, notice, what was my ratio? Four. Do you notice four in the uh, equation here? That's not coincidence. Turns out, the ratio, the R, is the base of your uh, exponential expression. Not the number in front, it's the base of whatever expression it is. For example, <clears throat> if I have A sub n equals eight times, parentheses, negative three-fourths to the n plus one. Now this has a plus one in the power there, but that's still exponential, isn't it? That is an exponential expression because the variable's in the exponent. Okay, so that's exponential. So this means this is geometric. If we wrote out the terms, we'd see a geometric uh, sequence. And the R, what's the R? Negative three-fourths. Yeah, here the base is 
a fraction and it's negative, so whatever that base is, yeah, that's going to be your, uh, your ratio. All right. <clears throat> One last thing on these. Is that okay? <clears throat> All right. Just like with, uh, <clears throat> just as with arithmetic, there is a, uh, a formula for summing up in terms of a geometric sequence. Let's call this the geometric series formula, or one of them anyway. Um, <clears throat> it, is go it goes like this. If you have a geometric series, in other words, the terms are geometrically related there, then S sub n equals this. It's A sub 1 times 1 minus R to the n over 1 minus R. A little more complicated formula, but <clears throat> guess what it means? This is again the first term. R is your ratio, and n is the number of terms. So let's look at applying that formula to, uh, to one here. <clears throat> so this is the sum of the n terms of a geometric uh, series. Take the first term and then multiply it by this uh, lovely expression there. All right, so let's uh, take a look at this. So what's sum n equals 1 to 10, the first 10 terms of this right here, 4 times 2 to the n? Is that geometric? Yes, it is. It's exponential, so it's geometric. So that kicks in then this formula. So I can use this formula for a geometric one. So that says instead of having to add up all 10 terms there, what I can do is the first take the first term, which the first term would be uh, 4 times 2, 8. <laughs> you add it. Okay, 4 times 2 is 8. So the first term is 8. Times that by 1 minus what's the ratio? Yeah, R is 2 because it's the base. Always the base there. So R is 2. I've got 1 to 10, so that's 10 terms. And then divide by uh, 1 minus just R, so it will be 1 minus 2. So that's going to be 8 times... <clears throat> 1 minus uh, 2 to the 10th is 1,024. Divide that by uh, negative 1, 1 minus 2. So it's 8 times negative uh, 1,023 divided by negative 1, which is basically 8 times 1,023, which is 8,184. <coughs> Do one more of those. <clears throat> if I take the sum n equals 0 to 12 of 6 times negative 2 thirds to the n. Also geometric, because it's exponential. And so I can apply the, uh, the formula S sub n, A1 times 1 minus r to the n, 1 minus r. Okay, <clears throat> how does this one start? Well, the first term, well, that's one point here. The first term is not n equals 1, it's n equals 0, isn't it? So I plug in n equals 0 there for the first term, and I get what? Well, I get negative 2 thirds to the 0, but that's really nice because what's anything to the 0? 1. So that's 6 times 1, so that's 6. That part of it's nice anyway. All right, then I have 1 minus the ratio. Ratio is negative 2 thirds, so I go negative 2 thirds. Raise that to the number of terms there are. Well, 0 to 12 is 13 terms. And then divide that by 1 minus r, which again, r is negative 2 thirds. That's the r, the base of the exponential thing there, okay? 
<coughs> and so here's uh, here's what I'd recommend on that. Uh, yeah, this do the power first. Negative two thirds to the thirteenth uh, power. And I'd use the parentheses. And it's uh, it's a negative point zero zero five. One three eight, let's say. <clears throat> then also, uh, uh, it's going to happen there too. But when I do one minus negative two thirds, that's going to be a plus two thirds, isn't it? So it's going to be one plus two thirds, which is uh, be one point. Uh, if you do decimal, one point six 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 six. So this up here also is plus. So that's going to be six times would be one point zero zero. 5138, so this is not going to be a nice, pretty number. Divided by 1.666. That's what you got. Times it by 6. See if we get it. See what I get here. 6 times 1.005138 divided by 1. Point, how many 6s do you feel like doing there? So it's about 3.618. 